dingue. Bonsoir et bienvenue sur le MAG. Ce soir, deux invités, Peter Bourke et Lisa Gérard. Ceux qui connaissent les morts qui savent danser, savent d'où vient Lisa Gérard, chanteuse donc de Dead Can Dance. Elle présente cette fois-ci un album solo avec un musicien donc Peter Bourke qui, lui, n'est pas inconnu des amateurs de musique ambiante, voire atmosphérique, puisque c'est la moitié du duo Soma, un duo dans une musique électronique et plutôt low-key. Donc, on est ravis de recevoir ces deux invités pour l'album Duality. Uh, hello, Lisa. Hello, Peter. Bonjour. Uh, uh, first, uh, before seeing the video, could you tell us what was the, the first reason for you linking together for this? Uh, duality album? We were together because we both live in Australia. We'd work together in doing live concerts with the Mirapool and Dead Can Dance. And um, I was doing a, a project on the Aramaic language and I asked Peter to come and do some percussion and some engineering for me to make some two minute musical interludes that would lock those pieces together on, in that concept. And um, we After a couple of the pieces, we discovered that there was one that we would like to develop that wouldn't fit into a two-minute scenario. And having explored that, we discovered that we had creative potential together to write. So we, at that point, in secret, went on to develop various pieces of music that eventually became duality. Ça semble tellement simple, on en reparle dans quelques instants avec euh, un petit clip pour commencer. Voici donc Peter Bourg et Lisa Gérard. Écoutez, regardez. Case, uh, is it something that you started to do professionally, singing, or did you start uh, earlier before you, you actually became a, a singer in a band? Uh? I was, I've been a singer from the time I could. I, I think I was singing before I was speaking. I think all people sing before they speak. But then they lose it, you know, we. We never lose that. We just let it sleep. Mm. What type of, um, 
of emotions do you think uh, uh, people get from listening to the, the, the music that, uh, that, that you produce? For, for example, for this duality album, did you think about what type of, uh, uh, of, um, how should I say, of, yeah, of emotions uh, it would convey to the, to the people listening to it? Or? No, it's always a subjective um, reaction within people. I'm some, some, sometimes surprised by the reaction that people have and feel no affinity. We weren't, sorry. That's okay. We weren't trying to express, we didn't have uh, preconceived ideas about what we were trying to express. It was very much just an exploration of the potential that existed and uh, of unlocking uh, the potential. But uh, about the musical texture, I remember that there's something that really uh, got me that was on, on one of your Soma albums. You, you said that you are a member of uh, like the anti-copyright uh, sample society or something. I mean, meaning that you, uh, you, you stood for not copywriting samples, which means you, you, you like the free access to sounds or to, mm -hmm. to, to sound textures uh, without having legal implications behind yeah, it. Or the, uh, the organization you're referring to is Musicians Against Copyright of Samples. Mm -hmm. And I've always felt that once um, a piece has been finished and it's been released, I really have to let it go and I, can't, I don't really have the right to say to people that, no, you can't take that fragment um, because whether you actually use the fragment or whether you just hear it and it inspires you to create something else, it's all part of the, the whole process that goes on of listening, creating, inspiring. And did you have the occasion to put it in practice? I mean, did you have, like, for example, a, a techno band or rap artist or whatever who, who took a sample of a piece of your music and you said it's okay? Uh, we no, I've, need to no I've, I've never been... Well, no one's asked us for permission and I've, I've never heard uh, any fragments of our music appearing I have. in other people's music. Of Soma? No, oh, I mean your own, yeah. Mm. Yeah, I've yeah, hundreds... I've a couple of times. Hundreds and <laughs> hundreds of times. And did you, did you enjoy it or did you not care? Or? I think it's wonderful that someone is inspired enough by your work to want to use it as a part of the fabric of their own expression. But d d did you yourself find uh, new ways of uh, expressing uh, emotions or music through a new uh, type of uh, instruments? For example, did uh, all this electronica wave that became like more and more like um, something that goes with the modern music, did you find it uh, opening new doors or...? Yes, it certainly gives you freedom to move parts around mm -hmm. that we didn't have in the beginning. Was it a long process, the recording uh, itself? Of, uh, yes, it was um, pretty much a full year of working five days a week. Um, it may seem that the, the process is easy and the work flows naturally, but it's a lot of hands-on work. And for the 10% that's there on the record, there's 90% that people don't hear of ideas that were tried and avenues that were explored and didn't work, and then we come back and keep exploring. Uh, Lisa, w when you said that this music was done without preconception, uh, what, what the, for, for the songs that, uh, that made it to the album, what was the first, uh, the first visual visualization that you had of, the, of these songs? Was it like a, a, a sound, a melody? Uh, from, from where did the songs uh, grow? The songs grow from a denial of the betrayals of the human experience. When you enter the creative process, it's usually to, to turn away from the banal, mundane experiences that we go through in our daily lives. It's to create something or to be involved with something that brings you in contact with, with another dimension.
of the human experience. And it enables us to do that. It enables us to communicate. And when we work with the music, it communicates to us. In the beginning, we are, it is a tutorial of creation for us. We are very much the servant in that scenario. And it requires surrender. And if you can't surrender, then you can't unlock the, the, the fragments of the abstract that are integral to the magic of creation. I have to agree. <laughs> and t tell me, uh, that, that might seem a bit naive, but uh, would you agree that the, the overall feeling that comes from uh, music such as uh, dualities is more like uh, melancholic or sad than uh, happy or optimistic? They are, or? The, I would call them the heart yearnings. The heart yearnings that people are familiar with through their own experiences. The, the thing about music and creation is that we don't come to know what it means. We are a part of it. And we, our experiences, the experience itself is the perfection that is embellished within the creative process or within the body, within understanding or contact with creation, whether it be the birth of your child or the birth of your, of your work, there is an element of a lack of control by virtue of its ambiguous nature. We cannot take responsibility completely for what we make. It's something that we don't fully understand. It would be a lie to try to explain absolutely what it means. It has, we can explain and um, analyze its abilities to allow people to come into contact with their inner world or to repose and reflect. But to understand music would be the death of the life force that will carry on from the beginning of time until the end of time. It's eternal. When we enter the creative process, we become aware of the eternal. It's funny, I have, uh, you have such an uh, amazing way to, uh, to speak about the music. To me, it seems to be like a, nearly like a religious uh, view no. of it. Uh, no, it's, a, the, it's, the, the idea of it's the based on, on the human. There are, it is like to define between the things that it's possible to see as true and possible to see as untrue. And the music is connected with the things that are true. And you, I don't, I see religion as being a structure based on, on, uh, doc, on doctrine, which isn't always willing to enable the person to unlock the doctrine. There is a desire to keep people from the true experience of the spiritual life often in religion and it is for that that I don't see how I can put religion into the music. It's not possible to make soup with the things in that way. <laughs>